This video starts with a train journey. Quite a long train journey. A train journey to pick something up that I think will be a nice addition to my computer collection. A quick stopover in the south part of Amsterdam. A nice opportunity to take a look at some of the awesome futuristic architecture. Oh, and Bianca is coming along with me on this pickup, as usual. The train we are currently on is heading for Utrecht Centraal. With 21 tracks and about 280,000 travelers a day, the biggest train station in the Netherlands. As you can see, there are some shops and it's very busy and always buzzing with people. So big that I had to move around Bianca on a trolley. After a couple of minutes exploring the floor and fauna of Utrecht, our intercity train arrived. That will drop us off here, in Sittard. Yes, a sitting tard, I suppose. Bye bye train, thanks for dropping us off. In Sittard we changed modes of transport and hopped on a bus. That brought us to the place where we picked up the stuff I'm adding to my collection. The weather was horrible that day and although we didn't get it on camera, it rained a lot. So I had to cover my stuff up with some garbage bags. When I get home I will be talking about what I'm hiding on my trolley. But first I will walk back about 3 kilometers and even cross a river with a beautiful view. And then we managed to find a bus, as seen here on Bianca's hidden camera. Then a quick trip back on the train, and as always, Bianca had to munch on her favorite nuggets, the chili cheese one. <laughs> After about a 7 hour train journey, we arrived back in my hometown, and headed home. So what did I get? What piece of retro tech made me spend about 7 hours in public transport? Let's take a look. These are two AVT Comp 2s. You might have no clue what these are. I'll explain, but first watch this. They're smuggled into this country aboard jets from the Orient. They're hidden within crates of cargo from Taiwan. They're brought across the border with clandestine methods equal to those used by the most sophisticated drug dealer. People who engage in illegal international intrigue are focusing on high tech. At the U.S. Customs Office in San Francisco, agents unpacked boxes of computer contraband. It's no coincidence that some of these computers resemble an Apple II. They're from Taiwanese companies who are accused of stealing Apple's engineering design. They're illegal because they violate U.S. copyright law. Where nowadays forgers focus more on phones and other small electronics to forge, back in the 1980s a lot of companies tried to infringe on Apple's copyright and clone the Apple II. So these AVT Com 2s are Apple II compatible. I'll have to do some research to see if the software and architecture were licensed, or if AVT belongs in the same list as the pineapple. These are funky machines. It has these handles which give it a very industrial appearance. Maybe they were intended for some sort of factory environment. They need a lot of work on the metal covers that appear to be painted metal. The top one says NTS1112 and appears to have been made by the Center Electronic Company based in Seoul, Korea, so not of Taiwanese origin. It has serial number 0223. The bottom one is identical, only this one says NTS 1115. I wondered what that stands for. Were they on some sort of network? They don't have any networking cards though. I don't even know if they made networking cards for the Apple II. This is serial number 0573. So the motherboards appear to be filthy with a lot of dust. Let's open one up and take a closer look. Ah, nice. 
There we find a 6502 processor, a bunch of EPROMs with FED and somewhat looks like RAM chips. The front bezel of this one is broken and was held on with some tape. Maybe we can fix that in the future. Let's do a smoke test. The light went on but nothing happened. After some simple troubleshooting steps, I moved on to the next comp too. Let's do a smoke test on this one as well. We again have a red light, but this time something else happened. On the screen for a split second it shows a display, but when I changed the brightness on the CRT, I saw this. Let's do some basic troubleshooting, like removing the cars, and seeing what happens. This was just some random testing of course, when I take a deeper dive, I'll do more research. Now I want to see what happens when I clean the card slots with some contact spray. Normally I use WD-40, but the store I went to was out of that one, so I got this non-name brand. Although now I'm looking at the footage, I could have also used the one next to it probably. So let's take out the cards and spray some cleaner. I'll also spray some on the 6502. Interesting results. Now I have some characters on the screen. I think these are promising signs, but like I said, I will have to take a look at some Apple II troubleshooting guides. When removing the disc controller, I got a bunch of stripes. I want to try the contact cleaner also on the other one. By the way, this spray leaves a bit of an oily residue on the PCB. But then, oh my god, out of the blue, I turned it on and it booted. It even made the boot sound. Yes, I got the Apple II prompt. For the first time I got an Apple II cursor at my home, so I'm hopeful to get at least one of them functioning. But maybe even both. But there is one problem I need to see if I can solve. And that involves this port. Yes, the 16 pins you are seeing here are the pins used by the AVT keyboard. A keyboard that I currently don't own and I think are more rare than the computers themselves. I'll show what the original looks like in the computer TLC episode, I will make about these. I did some quick research and think that Apple II keyboards might be compatible, so I will be looking for some modern day replacements. Replacements that don't break the bank though, maybe something like a PS2 converter. Tips on this and of course the troubleshooting will be very welcome, I'm a retro amateur after all. The seller of these awesome computers also sold me a very nice Commodore 1901 monitor that looks awesome but sadly is missing the front bezel that used to have the Commodore logo on there, but for only 10 bucks I'm not complaining. I tested it with one of my MSX computers. Oh and it also came with a box as you might have seen on my trolley, so a nice stack of vintage hardware added to my ever grown collection. Even better that I can finally say that I now own something Apple II compatible. Prepare for the future deep dive into these awesome computers and thanks for watching.